It's as if there's somebody conducting an orchestra over your shoulder playing the game. I actually want this beat and I, I want to record music on this beat. It sounds like an angry robot with a, with a, with a drum track on it and I, <laughs> I, I need more of this. A lot of people are listening off the little tinny speaker and it's like, and, and <laughs> there's no bass, there's no bass. <laughs> Welcome to Talk on GTV. I'm Inel Tomlinson, subbing in for Jayan Lopez. So, what do video games and instruments have in common? They both get played. <laughs> Today, we're going to discuss how music fits into video games, why music is so important to play, and why play is so important to music. That, that makes sense, right? Music accompanies the video game player on their travels. It creates an atmosphere and it guides them and can provide clues. Music and video games have a beautiful, harmonious relationship. But there are rules to this relationship and codes to follow. To show you what I'm talking about, let's go back to the 8-bit era. In early video games, music was practically non-existent due to technological limitations of the consoles at the time. The first really striking tune was probably Pong on the Atari. Some of our older viewers might find the next sequence disturbing. Okay, it's more of a beat than a tune, but it helped players identify actions. And also, it made us lose our minds when losing a game. The same principle held for Space Invaders, a tune comprised of only four notes. In 1985, Nintendo hired its first composer, Koji Kondo, who helped create the famous Super Mario Brothers tunes. It was the beginning of the era of interactive or adaptive music, one of the foundations of video game tunes. Basically, background music, theme melodies, and sound effects have to change with game events. If you progress, it's epic music. If you face a boss, it's dangerous music. If you need me more than I need you, it's Ed Sheeran. After Kondo, classically trained composers flocked to video games like Nobuo Uematsu and Koichi Sugiyama. Artists from the pop scene and film music got in on the action. David Bowie composed the music for The Nomad Soul. Hans Zimmer created the soundtrack for Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Danny Elfman wrote the score for Fable. Composers duke it out to give us goosebumps like Jesper Kidd on Assassin's Creed. My dream, Super Smash Brothers scored by the RZA. Cream, dollar dollar bill, yo. In 1994, there was a new wave of consoles like the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. A new type of game revealed itself, bringing a whole new type of interactivity. Players had to use music to progress the story, like in Parappa the Rapper. GTA had its own in-game, in-car radio station to help savor the sounds of the day. Oh, that's that good sh Music in video games is also obviously about playing music. Interactive music features in rhythm games like Beat Mania, Guitar Freaks, or Elite Beat Agents. Not to mention the unforgettable Guitar Hero, where you play a copy of a real musical instrument. With rhythm games, anything is possible. Learn to play a real instrument with Rocksmith. Become a DJ with DJ Hero or Fuser. Imitate Shakira on Just Dance. Not advisable if you've got downstairs neighbors and they're light sleepers. Believe me, I speak from experience. Improve your sense of rhythm with Rhythm Paradise and Beat Saber. Massacre the entire Beatles discography with Rock Band. Or warble in your own living room with Sing Star series. Who's up for the ABBA only version? Hey? Anyone? From a simple bleep, music has become an essential, indispensable ingredient to video games. Also, giving artists a helping hand. The Timefall album, which coincided with the release of Death Stranding with the participation of Major Lazer, Khaled, Alan Walker, and other party warmers. The Storm's Eclipse incorporated into Watch Dogs Legion. Travis Scott's now legendary virtual gig on Fortnite. Joining me to discuss all things video game music today is on the end, P Money, Grime artist and gamer. We've got Marcus Hedges, game score composer and leader of the Trend Orchestra who do covers of uh, video, classic video game tunes, and Adam Lavender, studio production and QA manager at Ubisoft. He's worked on games like Call of Duty, The Division, and Guitar Hero Live. How you guys doing? Good, Good, Good to you. have you here. Now, first, first off, first off, I want to know, I want to know, what, how are you involved in video game music? Let's start with you. So, 
I, I started off, um, actually I used to work as a, like a music venue manager and concert promoter and all oh, that kind of stuff. It. And kind of just fell into games. Um, and ended up working on Guitar Hero Live. My entire job for the most part was to make sure that the, the notes that you see on screen yeah. were musically accurate. Oh, right. Yeah, so that was bizarre. So that was the kind of first foray into uh, Okay, so games. when I was out of key, that was that was that's you, did that's it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you, you better hit those notes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Mark, is that about yourself? Yeah, so um, always been a gamer, uh, always been into music and uh, went to study uh, music at university and um, tried to sort of, wanted to like fuse the two of them. Um, and so uh, the role, like the, the, the sort of dream was always to, to, to write for games. So I started doing these like uh, orchestral covers of, of like old, you know, retro games. So you got your Super Mario, you got your Sonic. And yes. so sort of rewriting those in like a big orchestral cinematic way. And then oh, wow. that was like my sort of stepping stone to get into to writing music for, you know, original stuff for games. and. That's what I'm doing now as oh, well. Wow. So. I like that, a P money. What does video games mean to you, man? Uh, I've, I've always played like video games since I was a kid, man. Just, mm. yeah, just been into them since young. All different consoles, all different types of games. And then obviously as I got older, I got into music quite mm. heavily, but um, I didn't actually get my music onto gaming until like people respected me as like a, a decent gamer. Okay. And then I guess, uh, yeah, the first, First game I got my music on was uh, FIFA, mm. and um, I was out of like music musicians. Yeah, that's a big deal. I was deal. like, I was like the boss of FIFA. Is you it? Know, we was on a tour bus. Everyone was getting wiped. <laughs> <laughs> and then I feel like FIFA was like, you know, right, are you one of those people? Yeah. You know, when you score like a score, score, goal, you just like you rub it in people's no, faces. No, I'm humble. I'm not like <laughs> that. You know what? If, if you if you score and you do that, yeah, then it's like all right, you've opened the gate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm the sort of guy that skids on my knees when I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> But that's interesting though, because you're obviously you're, you're a grime artist and we've had we've had like musical games uh, with like artists in the past that have made games involving their music. Like we had like a uh, Wu-Tang Clan Taste mm. the Pain back in the day on, on the PlayStation 1. Uh, we, we had Def Jam yeah. as well. Do you reckon that uh, like the UK grime scene or the UK music scene in general could have like a collaborative game like maybe like a Smash Brothers yeah. where <laughs> artists all coming in? Yeah, I mean there was always talks about that when, when the, the, the Def Jam game came out, there was always talks of if there was possibly ever a, like a way of having UK artists, like a DLC yeah, with UK artists or something. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We've always had those talks, but I don't think anyone knows how to really get into like creating a game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. I think the, the closest we've got is like Grand Theft Auto or something. Do you know what I mean? That's true, that's true. Yeah. But as I said, like with games like FIFA, like the, the curation of the, the soundtracks are mm. incredible. Which goes on to my next question. What are your favorite video game soundtracks of all time? Come on. Come all time. On. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three. You give me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to give you three. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's too. It's too difficult. They better be good. Good for you. Oh, they're, they're the best three. Oh, okay. best three. Right. Right. Um, I think the one that stands out for, for me the most out of all of them is um, the original Pokemon series. So like blue, okay. red, yellow. And get behind that. That's, that's I, I just. I, I still can't quite get on board with the with the fact that Junichi Masuda managed to create a symphony using chip tune, yeah. Yeah. you know, and you look at how far games have come these days with, with kind of massive orchestral pieces and it's so immersive and you can go, you can go back to those games mm. and they're still as immersive as if you were playing something today. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's, it's crazy. So I guess they were all like melody based, weren't they? Cause on the, like using like the Game Boy to kind of churn out these sounds, it was like, you had to kind of create these melodies. You couldn't really go atmospheric with like, yeah, you couldn't have thing. like drones and things like that. And I, I think actually that's why, that's why it worked so well was because, you know, it was monophonic and it was chip tune and there are themes in it, right? So mm. it's a bit like when you watch it, watch a film, I'm going to use Lord of the Rings as an example, right? So you, you hear the themes and you go, okay, the ring is on screen. You know, it's about that. With the Pokemon series, you knew that you were in like Pallet Town Pallet or whatever. Town, it, was yeah. just, it was just so cool. And then the other ones, I'd say, Gears of War 2. Ooh. Oh, just, just ridiculously immersive and a bit, a bit scary at the same time, it right? It was, yeah. You know, um, and Assassin's Creed 2. Okay, nice Ezio, yeah. bring Ezio back. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, okay, I, I didn't expect those choices, but yeah, I like it, I like it. Marcus, what, where are we going, where are we going? So, uh, purely on like nostalgia alone, I think I'm gonna have to say um, Zelda Ocarina of Time. That's like, it's like 
at the at the very top yep, for yep, me. Yep, yep. Um, you know, it's a si similar sort of thing. Like you hear the music, takes you right back to when you were playing the game, but exactly where you were in the game and all this kind of stuff. great adventure and all that kind of stuff. So that's one. And then more recently, the uh, the God of War soundtrack, um, oh. phenomenal stuff. It's yeah, Bear, Bear McCreary. So. I mean, it speaks for itself, really. It's it does. Amazing it does, story. Yeah, yeah it's a great soundtrack. Hey, I'm definitely with you there on uh, Ocarina of Time. I tell you what, I reckon I could play a couple of those Ocarina tunes. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was exactly. Right, three notes. I got that. I got. That. I don't know how to play it, but I know I can do that. Give me an afternoon, I can exactly, do that. Exactly. Exactly. P Money. What's your favorite video game soundtrack, man? I didn't really get into like watching. Films like James Bond, mm. but Golden and in Nintendo 64. Oh, yes, God. that yes. had me. Like, to me, that's a soundtrack to me that I was just like, I used to batter that game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And singing it like constantly. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, a few years later, I think it was a uh, Grand Theft Auto 04, and um, it was like the first one where I felt like the soundtrack was like rap as well. Uh, it was uh, Nico Bennett. Nico, kind of, yes. yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I felt like. I was like, I actually want this beat. I, I want to record music on this beat. Like that was the first game that had a soundtrack where I felt like I could make a song on that. Oh wow! Yeah. Is, is that is that what like sparked off your love for like Grand Theft Auto? Because I know you do a lot of Grand Theft Auto like RP online. Um, yeah, I mean, I loved Grand Theft Auto before that anyway. But yeah, I, I think Grand Theft Auto Four made me like actually want to like try and make music for. For Grand Theft Auto, yeah. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, I got yeah, I got heavily into the RP recently. Yeah. Yeah, because for, for those that don't know, like Grand Theft Auto RP is like a role playing kind of, I guess, extension to like Grand Theft Auto Five, right? Yeah. So it's like a they've made their own server, but there's also a music scene. So you could be an artist and you know do live shows in the game, mm. and uh, it's quite it's crazy because at one time, let's say you know. 30 people are in that room while you're performing and everyone's streaming mm. and everyone's got like 10,000 people watching them each. Mm. You've got like 100,000 people. Yeah, just suddenly you're you performing to like a huge yeah. audience it's with crazy. original yeah. music. Yeah. It's crazy how like music has kind of changed and evolved in that kind of way. Cause like similar, like Fortnite has done similar things as well. Have mm. any of you guys like experienced any of like the Fortnite concerts? Yes, I have. I'm a, I don't play it, but my son does. And mm. I remember my son being excited. Come look, look, look. He's a massive fan of like Travis Scott. Mm. And he was like, look, and I was like, oh my God, like that's an actual show. And there was all these people like watching that. I was like, that's sick. As we're on this topic, right? I want to know like, what sort of music do you like to listen to to play games? Because obviously like these games have soundtracks, but sometimes a lot of people like to put their own soundtracks into games. I remember back on the Xbox 360, there used to be a feature where you could put your USB like like stick into the Xbox and you could play your own playlist. And I used to do that with like Gears of War. Mm -hmm drum and bass all the way with the multiplayer. And make it <laughs> come with the chainsaw that, when I'm going with the clanky with the drum and bass. But what sort of music do you, do you guys like, like to listen to your own music while you play certain games? One that sticks out is um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Ooh. It was the first time I'd ever experienced a playlist in a game that you could kind of change and adapt, yeah. right? And yeah. I think I just remember having, it was the first time I heard Motorhead. And I just remember having like Ace of Spades on repeat no, the yeah, whole I time. Remember, yeah. I remember that, I do remember that. <laughs> you, come on, come on, P-Money, you're like me, and you adapt you you know adapt the team. It depends on the game. Like, so if, I, if it's FIFA, I, I leave all the soundtracks they have because okay. I, it introduces me to loads of different yes. music. You yes. know, like now I might be shopping in Tesco's, and my missus would be like, how do you know this song? And I'd be like, FIFA. Mm, yeah. But it's, it'll be something, it could be crazy, it could mm. be rock, whatever. Like, it'd be something you would never expect I'd listen to, but I know the song because of FIFA. But depending on the game, if it's like, you know, a driving game, if I'm playing like Forza Horizon, I would listen to that drum and bass mm. or something. You know, I feel like you need something up tempo when you're Thank driving, you. playing racing games. But then if you're playing, you know, a proper deep story mode, anything just with like real atmosphere to it, do you know what I mean? Mm. So sometimes it all depends on the game for me, man. Obviously you guys really appreciate like video game soundtracks. What do, you, do you think all players do though? Or do you think it's un, underappreciated? Cause let me put it this way, right? I've, I've worked in like video game like sounds before. I do like voiceover stuff. And when I go to these studios, they got big setups. They got the Dolby Atmos. They got the speakers on the ceiling all over. The subwoofers is everywhere. It sounds nice. <laughs> but when I go to my friend's house, he's playing on the mono speaker because the speaker's yeah. a bit bust on the, on the left hand side, and yeah, the, it's yeah, only coming yeah. out the right. And, and <laughs> he's not experiencing it how the developers intended it. Do you? 
And he doesn't mind that. Do you think most players appreciate the amount of effort that goes into these soundtracks? It's hard to say they don't appreciate it because how can you appreciate something you're not getting the full effects of? Unless everybody has those speakers in their house, they're not going to be able to appreciate what's mm. gone into it because they can't hear it. Exactly. So it's hard to say they don't appreciate it. I guess it's like appreciating the effort that goes in because like you play like these, like like Call of Duty, for example, and you've got all the, the whizzing and the, the bombs going off. Yeah. And if you've got the right subwoofer, you can feel that in your yeah, house. Yeah. But a lot of people are listening off the little tinny speaker and it's like, and, and <laughs> there's no bass. There's no yeah, bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are playing more often with, with headsets now, which yeah, I think is a true. good thing. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, you know, when I'm writing music for games and stuff as well, I'm considering that. I'm thinking, actually, you know, mm. the detail of sound here, like spatially as well, like a lot of games, I guess, you know, playing COD, you need, you need your headset on because you're thinking, where are they approaching from? Yeah. Where's the bullets coming from? And you hear the footsteps. And yeah. I, that also means like from a musical standpoint, they're, they're going to they're gonna hear you know, what you've intended. So what do you, what do you reckon are the most, in, I guess, important aspects of a video game soundtrack? I think that the, the idea of having a soundtrack that kind of fits with the, the tone and the theme of the game can either make or break it in, so, in some cases. Mm -hmm. If you look at something mm -hmm. like, um, like The Last of Us, it's so cinematic and, you know, so immersive that I think because you know some of the themes that you can hear and like there's the, there's the guitar and all this kind oh, of thing. Oh, every time the guitar comes oh, in. every time. <laughs> That's serious stuff. You know? That's serious stuff. <laughs> and, but I, th I think it's, it's that, it's the kind of little things that the player kind of recognises and goes, oh, okay, something's about to happen here. Like every time mm. you're playing Gears of War and you hear the omen. Yes. It's like, all right, some, somebody's about to die. Yeah. Something, something bad yeah. is about yeah. to, you know? <laughs> Saying that then, are you guys fans of rhythm games? I know you are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. But are you guys fans of Rhythm Games? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You didn't see, didn't see that coming. Tell, tell, us about, tell us about these Rhythm Games. <laughs> I, um, well, I, I, I taught guitar for like four years and I, I've been playing since I was like, I don't know, 11 or something like that. Mm. And I remember when I got Guitar Hero 3 for Christmas, it was like 2007 or something. I sat there and I just played it all day. I just couldn't believe how amazing this was. Do you remember playing that was the first song? Was it um, Slow, Slow oh, Ride? Slow Ride. By yeah, 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 I remember that. Um, it was just, it was, it was awesome. And like, I think it's also Guitar Hero 3 that you, you finish and it's Dragon Force through Fire and oh, Flames. Yeah. I was in Germany a few years ago at Gamescom mm. and I was just having a chat with somebody that, that, that I was working with. And then Herman Lee, the guitarist of Dragon Force was behind and I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I, I just, I ran after him and I was just like, I just need to say, like I worked on Guitar Hero, man. And he was like, you worked on Guitar Hero, that's amazing. <laughs> and it was, just, it was just so cool. He was there to play Farming Simulator. Oh, that was, that was as funny. you do, isn't it? Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think the, like, the rhythm action thing, I mean, it was certainly quite an experience to, to work on um, a Guitar Hero game and a, and a bit of a dream come true. But, you know, you look at that whole genre of, of games and it just opened up so much for people, right? I mean, even if it was just playing on the plastic drums, it kind of inspired a generation mm. of people to pick up an instrument. It's like super satisfying. It was like yeah. really, really satisfying to feel like I'm actually making these, these tunes like happen in a way. And, and, you know, because rhythmically, they were on point, it, yeah. you know, you, you, you got that sort of satisfying nature. It's, it was really cool. Oh, nice. Has the, has the relationship between the audiences and video games music changed over the years? I think because of um, game budgets, game tech, all that kind of stuff, improving, evolving, I think that with that, the music's involved as well. So mm. like people are anticipating these you know, what are they going to do for the soundtrack now? Like it's, it's, it's its own thing. Mm. Like it's, it's an aspect of, of video games that, you know, people are, you know, video games are so popular now. And it's an aspect of video games that I think that people actually look for and, and anticipate now. So I, I think people are excited about it. I think it's, I think it's improved for sure. Mm. You kind of look for the full cinematic experience yeah. now though, don't you? This is the yeah. thing, it's like, you know, we were talking earlier on, weren't we, about yeah. um, uh, various kind of composers and things that you see on the credits of massive, massive films. Mm. And even if you look, you know, back at Gears of War, you've got Steve Yablonski who did like Transformers and yeah. Friday the 13th remake who's jumping on a, on a video game video soundtrack, game soundtrack yeah. and all of a sudden you have this huge experience because the soundtrack is as big as the game. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. that's true, that's true. Gives it extra, yeah, extra weight, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And they can, and they got the, they got the like, 
creative freedom because of all the, the the tech that's available now to like really you know it's as if there's somebody conducting an orchestra over your shoulder playing mm. the game which is which is mad when you think about it but Pete money do you, is there like any styles of music that you want to see more in video games my thing is i'd like to see music not just taken where it's like you know an artist has released music already and then it's added to a game i'd love to see games work hand in hand mm. with an artist nice to idea. create the yes. actual soundtrack. Yes. There was a guy that worked on um, a computer game where he'd already made the soundtrack and he was like, oh, I wanted to make a song for my album, you, could you vocal it? So I made a whole track about the game as if I was in the game, oh, but awesome. it wasn't for the game, it was for his album. Oh, okay. But then afterwards cool. they was like, oh, this would have been amazing for the game. Mm. And I'm like, well, this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. We should- Isn't it? At the end, DLC. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, like, this is why when you are, you know, getting ready to make music for your game, maybe you should actually connect with artists and actually yeah. create something fresh instead of just taking a track that's already out. That's true, yeah. Oh, well, we, have, we have seen like elements of that starting yeah. to happen, like they did with Stormzy for Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. So like, that, yeah. that sort of stuff is it's happening. I'd, I'd love to see it. And, I, and again, I'm going to keep hammering home. We need to see a UK Smash Brothers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep saying Is video game music a genre on its own? At least in my opinion, I don't know whether it would classify as its own genre, because I suppose it spans so many, yeah, right? Exactly. You've got your symphonies, and you look at something like... Um, uh, like the SSX games, and mm. they had their, their playlists of kind of indiv individual tracks that spanned from every genre, right? Mm. Playlist, yeah, genre. I'm, I'm not it's sure. Good because it's because games are so diverse in their yeah. genre anyway, so they yeah. just they, they call for for so many different genres of music. You got Deathloop's got like 1960s mm. rock and stuff in there. It's like you know. Yeah. Yeah. As, as many genres of game as there are, I think you've got many genres of game music. But that's what I mean. Like yeah. some, like like Deathloop, some uh, some of the music in there is, is like sixties inspired, and mm. others is a bit more futuristic. Yeah, and it's not one genre. Mm. So, do you put it down as video game soundtrack as a genre? Then, <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that because I feel like genres of music is is based on like sound, and do you know what I mean? So mm. I feel like the sounds already there. Yeah. There's already genres. Yeah, true. that's just true. true. Very true. P money, you put it right, man. <laughs> <laughs> <So>, Case closed. <laughs> Literally. So, saying that, then, what sort of video games have introduced you to music that you wouldn't necessarily listen to? I remember the first time I ever heard anything that was even moderately techno or or, or drum and bass was on the soundtrack to uh, SSX, mm. and I just remember thinking. What is this? It sounds like an angry robot with a with a with a drum track on it. And I, thought, I, I need more of this. Yeah. You know, I, it was it was games like that and um, Need for Speed, right? With the, with the various kind of tracks that were on that, and just opened up a whole new new world yes. of wow. There's, yeah. there's more genres. Underground than just, too. Needs to yeah, yeah, right? yeah. You know, yeah. and and again, even the pro skate the skater games. You have Come you have your things on. like yeah. you have your things like Motorhead on there, and, and like Primus. Do you remember Primus? <laughs> I tell you what, Tony Love Hawk nearly turned me to a skater. <laughs> Tony Hawk nearly turned me to a skater. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's the beauty of it, though, right? Is that when you get a game that has just so many different um, tracks on it and just like amazingly curated, curated. So playlists. you're saying those comp those like compilation kind of yeah. soundtrack yeah, games, absolutely, like the Fifas, like the the Forzas. Video game soundtracks are slightly different to kind of filmic scores that you listen to, where. They, they have to kind of be adaptable to the environment and the situation that the player finds themselves in. How, do you, how does that kind of work technically in terms of making sure that those flourishes come in at the right time or those jazzy saxophones come in when you're hitting that right corner in Mario Kart, for example? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm thinking of like uh, the, Wario, the Wario track in Mario Kart 8. <laughs> where you're coming down the mountain and as you get to certain points of the, the, the racetrack, the music changes and adapts to where you are in the race. Mm. But how does, that, how does that kind of work? And how do you kind of work out a score that works with how the player's playing? We have this, this stuff called middleware, which is essentially the composer will, will write the music um, and it will, be, it will be kind of, you can think of it as like chunks of music and they're you know, written in the same key so that they can transition between each other and noticeably or that they can loop um, and it's triggered within the game so the you know in the engine the, the players moving through through the the level it moves from one chunk of music to the next chunk of music or you know that chunk of music will have different layers and one layer will turn off or mm. two layers will turn off 
uh, yeah, and, and it's yeah, it's all dynamic. It's all dynamic. It's uh, you know more about what the player does, and that triggers something than the yeah. actual static. Um, yeah, because I, I always think about if when I'm playing a Final Fantasy VII remake, for example, is probably a yeah. great example of that. Where as you're running around as Cloud, the music has uh, the music's at one kind of level, and then as soon as some enemies come in, because the the, the fighting dynamics are like dynamic, mm. that all of a sudden, it, as you say, it almost switches to a next bit, and then the music suddenly heightens, and it yeah. gets to like the the fight music automatically just comes in as you're fighting, and then as soon as that battle ends, it slows down into mm. back into the original track that you had before yeah yeah so it's just like underlining you know what what the what the developer wants the player to feel you know feels like a lot of work you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> right now once again it's time to conclude the show with a little quiz to test your knowledge on video game music uh the principle is as simple as the theme of mario i'm the conductor yeah, you see what i did there <laughs> I asked the questions, there's four answers and only one of them is right. Okay, are you guys all clear? <laughs> all clear. Okay, yeah. let's go with the first question, here we go. Choo choo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what the choo choo was. That's the other conductor, isn't it? Few people know it, but a famous star co-wrote the music of Sonic 3, released in 1994 on the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. Which one is it? A, Michael Jackson. B. Bono, C, Freddie Mercury, or D, Rita Matsuko? It's Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, because he said pretty convincingly nods over there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no I idea. Do. I have no go, idea. Go, 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 what they say. I think it's Michael Jackson. I don't get it. Okay, okay. Just in case they're wrong, isn't it? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the answer is A, Michael Jackson. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well done. In 1998, when Ocarina of Time was launched, the original music of the Temple of Fire was controversial. Why was it controversial? Was it A, it sounded too much like the music of the game Shadow Man, boom, boom. B, it gave epileptic fits. C, it contained extracts of Islamic prayers. Or D, it plagiarized two cops in Miami. I think it's C. I think it's C. I think it's C. I'll go with C. Go C. With C. The correct answer, was C, it contained extracts of Islamic prayers. A famous video game inspired Eiffel 65's Blue Bada B video. Which one? A, Crash Bandicoot. B, Metal Gear Solid. C, Half-Life. Or D, Eiffel 64, an obscure rhythm game from the 90s. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say D. Would it not be D? I, I remember that video like, having like some kind of blue alien or something. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I don't know. Was I a, don't it was know. A, it was a mad music video. I, I want to say Half-Life. Half-Life? It's gone for C, the rest of you gone for D. I think so. Well, I, I, I don't know. The correct it's answer. Who? Go on. Go on. Is B, Metal Gear Solid. What? Oh, okay. I know, I said what too, bro. Recently, the American government has been accused of plagiarizing the music of the video game Yoshi's Island. Where do you think the government used this music? <laughs> a, for an advert to join the army. Oh. B, for a vaccination campaign. C, for an anti-Bernie Sanders video during the 2016 campaign. Or D, for an educational game about recycling. No idea, but I'm going with D. Yeah, I was going to say D just because the nature of the oh. game. I'm going to go C. The correct answer was D, for an educational game about recycling. Very good. It should have been joined the army, though. That would be a wicked video. <laughs> Imagine. Yoshi's Island joined the army, though. <laughs> 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 Which of these four classic crooners does not appear on the Fallout 4 soundtrack? A, Billie Holiday. B, Nancy Wilson. C, Roy Brown. Or D, Bing Crosby. Nancy uh, Wilson. Yeah, uh, A. <laughs> you're going for A, you're going for Nancy. I'm going for C. Roy Brown. Okay. The correct answer is Nancy Wilson. Next question. <laughs> the most listened to track in the history of video games is Bohemian Rhapsody on Rock Band 3. There we are. Mm. How many times do you think it had been listened to as of August 2020? A, 1.2 billion times. B, 808 million times, C, 768 million times, or D, 12 times because nobody plays rock band apart from <laughs> Let, Let's go with B. B. A. 
A, you're going for 1.2 billion times, okay? Sure. Okay, B money? <laughs> Well, let's see, 768. 768 yeah. times. Okay, the correct answer is A, 1.2 billion times. That's a lot. That's that's a lot. On that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. People that's, got time on nice. their hands, you know. People that's got time. Nice. People got time. Next question. Complete the lyrics to the original Pokemon song. I'll roam the whole earth, hopefully tracking down Pokemon and their mysteries. What's next? A, in the light and in the dark. B, from early morning to late evening. C, the secret of their power. Or D, as long as they let me drink. Hey. A, in the light Ooh. and in the dark. That was quick. I'll go C. Okay. I'll go C as well. Secret of their power? Yeah. Okay. The correct answer is C, the secret of their power. Next question. The original singer of the Pokemon song is called A, Mike Leno, B, Garfield Brennan, C, Jason Page, or D, Jason Derulo? I'm gonna go B. I think it's Jason Page. All right, we've got B for Garfield, C for Jason. I think B as well. And B for Garfield. All right, the correct answer is C, Jason Page. Next question. The prelude of Final Fantasy VII was composed in record time. How long do you think it took though? A, 10 minutes. B. 30 minutes, C, one hour, or D, 17 seconds, is because the cat was walking over the piano at the time, invented the melody in that. Seventeen seconds. Seventeen. Thirty minutes or whatever. What, thirty whatever. minutes. Yeah. B. Thirty minutes. Seventeen oh, seconds. Going yeah, up I'm, the scale. I'm going to change our answer. Seventeen seconds. Seventeen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we, we win together. We lose together. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 You lot flopped. It was B. Thirty minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can reveal that the winner of today's quiz is. It's Adam. Well done, Adam. There you are. Look at we that. Are. We, I, I think we kind of knew anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know any answers. Yeah. <laughs> guess, guess work pays off. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank I you mean, guys. skill skill pays skill, off. Skill, yeah, <laughs> skill. Well, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Adam, Marcus, and P Money. And stay tuned next for the top five. According to many, video games awaken the psychopath in us, but they also awaken the musician, the music lover, the sultry songster who leads the chorus at the end of the party. I know what you're thinking. If Mrs. Simpson never managed to teach me the recorder in junior school, how can video games? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you right now with this little top five of the best games to become a musician. And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, four. Number five, Donkey Konga. There is no better game to get a sense of rhythm than Donkey Konga. And frankly, who wouldn't want a gorilla as a teacher? Better than a teenager in an old Nirvana t-shirt. Definitely. Number 4. Guitar Hero It's true, when you start out, you're more like Jimmy Olsen than Jimi Hendrix. But little by little, you progress, you evolve, you master more and more difficult pieces, and at the end, you even end up beating your 13-year-old cousin on a Joe Satriani solo. Number 3. Singstar Okay, Singstar won't exactly teach you how to be a musician, even less a singing star who does duets with Dua Lipa, but it will at least teach you to sing less out of tune on a Saturday night in a karaoke bar when you've had one too many drinks. If what they say is nothing is Number 2. Taikano Tatsujin. Pop that beat. The ideal game to teach rhythm to your children and to ensure you a few hours apiece. Contrary to what your seven-year-old daughter seems to think, banging on a pan all day with a remote control, that's not music. Number 1. Rocksmith The ultimate game for learning guitar and bass. I mean, I can tell you that I'm doing really well now. Some people even say I'm pretty good at playing Black Keys tunes. Mm. I mean, I'll show you one of these days, just, just not right now. Guitar's out of tune. 